Welcome to Kellis Coder. I have a serious case of the mumps today. Oh, I'm 51 years old and I get the fucking mumps. Motherfucker! Whoa! I'm cured! Wow! The, the medicine magic of Pfizer! <laughs> right! Mumps! What is MUMS? MUMS stands for Massachusetts General Hospital Utility Programming Service or system. And yeah, you know they took the word MUMS and just made it fit their abbreviation. So MUMS was created in 1966 and this was the realm that we had IBM mainframes and digital was coming with its minis. Now mainframes were too expensive for most uh, hospitals so they would use these minis and RSX 11 on the PDP 11 and I don't even know what was on the PDP 7 before that but they didn't have very functional databases so basically General Hospital Massachusetts decided to build their own database system and it would just boot from paper tape and the great thing is the code and the data are just in a single uh, data file that's the cool thing we in, in 1995 when I started working for MBVS later called Synopsys uh, our medical systems ran on Micronetics mums and we would boot into DOS and then start mums and it would take over the whole system and manage that and the great thing about mums is um, because it had the mini mindset you could put in these multi serial port adapters like Digiboard or Arnet and then connect terminals to it and run the software off terminals which was very very lucrative compared to uh, desktops desktops even in 1996 were expensive compared to a VT510 terminal that we used and the biggest installation we had was 128 serial ports and it ran on a single uh, 486 66 megahertz ISA machine and that's how powerful actually MUMS was. These days MUMS as a language is hardly used but Cache Intersystems Database is the fastest NoSQL database. It's commercial but it's basically a MUMS B3 database. So today we're going to use RSM we're going to install it and I will show you the basics of MUMS and we will write three little basic programs on MUMS or in MUMS to show you how we access data. It is one of those esoteric videos like we did with Forth and RiskOS. Seems to become a trend. Let's jump in. So we're using the reference standard MUMS and we build it from code. So just uh, check it out make it go through this readme to set it up so first we need to uh, install it and install the documentation that way we can run rsm which is the actual mump implementation and this is all documented here then i'll make a directory where i'm going to put my database in and uh, this startup script uh, for macOS, we need to set some kernel parameters in order to run uh, 12 job instances with shared memory. So here we start it, and it complains that I have not set the database, so I need to set this global variable to the database. I later on put it also into my uh, zshrc file, so it will always be there. And you can name this database anything that you want, and attach several, and here it is created. 64 megabytes empty oh, a typo <laughs> there we go and now we import the uh, global uh, routines and that's this and here we go it imported all the global routines and these are written in mums so it takes it from that mums file and imports them in the database because everything is stored in the database also the code so now when i start rsm we can actually uh, start it and that looks good so we can start with some demoing. Look at that. So setting RSM when you read the document is simple enough. So let's do some uh, basic mumps. So we start RSM. Uh, 
you see this is the USI, uh, UCI. A uh, UCI is basically a namespace. You can create different UCIs. So each application would have its own namespace or schema if you talk about databases. And the comma def, that is, uh, that is the user. So if you're here UCI, I think namespace. Now, uh, MUMS is a weird language because you have these statements like uh, write hello world, which is your hello world, but you will rarely see write you see everything being shorted to a single character. And the reason for that was uh, back in the day, there was a certain amount of space that each user had. I think it was a kilobyte or 12 kilobytes. I can't recall anymore. So you could get far more code uh, in that same user space by just uh, reducing the uh, words from right to W or from if to uh, i. So that is the weird thing. Now the cool thing about uh, MUMS is that a lot of these statements have so-called conditionals. So if we have write, you obviously also have a read. So let's read uh, my name in the variable uh, name. Now variables are case sensitive. So uh, array. So we can make a conditional by using a colon and saying name equals Ray, then So when the name is Ray, you are the shit man. If it is uh, Edith, then Edith isn't the shit. So that's the cool thing about uh, these indirect operators in there. That is a shorthand that I liked actually in the language and I don't like the language very much to be honest but that is kind of cool loops for example for i equals zero colon one colon a uh, hundred and then we can uh, just write hello world and if you want a new line you do a comma exclamation mark so that is your uh, basic loop here and without the exclamation mark you will see it will actually do them on a single line uh, if you want a multi-line uh, I cannot do that in the uh, in the REPL loop we'll do that in the code later on you would do and you go to a different line and then each line instead of just an indent is preceded by a dot that is so finicky. That is really, really weird. Now, um, arrays. We don't really have arrays. We have uh, a dictionary. That's basically it. So if we do a set uh, names, and then we can have a name one is Ray. You can do set names. Name two is uh, Edith. And we can just print names one or names two in this case, names one. Um, it is also multidimensional, so you can do uh, one comma two equals Raymond Duchess. Hey, that's not allowed. Why not? Oh, no, set names. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and of course, then you will get this. The thing is, these uh, do not survive the login. So if we hold, H is hold, or you can do hold. <laughs> uh, and I will print again. It is gone. Now the database handles these same structures and this is why MOMS is the first true NoSQL database. I remember back in 1997, I believe it was, Oracle was releasing, I think version nine. And I went to uh, one of those events and the guy was, we have the latest and the greatest NoSQL. And he gets demos and I'm like, but that is literally what we are using in MUMS. And that was created in 1966. So what is the new thing here? 
Uh, the cool thing about everybody knows NoSQL these days is that you can have unordered uh, storage. And that is the same uh, here with MUMS, which can be really powerful. But how do you do that? Um, it's actually really simple. It is just the same as using these dictionaries. You basically use dictionaries, but you proceed them with an arrow up. Or a carrot, it's also... Uh, named the first time i heard carrot yeah just to s carrot what the hell is a carrot oh the arrow up <laughs> so for example let's create users um we proceeded by one and we give it the name and this is something else that you see a lot uh, that is part of also the nosql brain set you have the first name a separator we at uh, MBVS Synopsis used the pipeline, but a carrot is also very commonly used, so whatever you want. And the last name. And why do I have a syntax error? Because this should not be a syntax error. Set user. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a weird thing. This is something that we programmers all do these days. Have a nice comma separation. This doesn't work in mumps. Right, so you have this, and let's make another user. Uh, Edith Bunker, for example. Right, so we have two users. And now, if we print them, just the same way that we do with uh, a... Uh, array or global uh, array or a non-global array this is a global array it persists them so if i go out hold so if i restart rsm we can then write arrow up users and uh, what was it again one comma name it will write my whole name and this is very convenient because you can easily extend this by just adding another pipeline to it and uh, concatenating to it. We can actually also use all these dollar functions to actually uh, handle data and globals. So we have dollar piece, so write dollar piece. Later on, we will just write dollar p because that will also work with the nature of uh, the mums abbreviations and we give it the global name users and well the note that we want to uh, read comma then we tell it the delimiter comma and the field and it's all one based so this should give the first name raymond yeah and two will give the second name um we also have a dollar order or dollar o which will give you actually the next uh, uh, key you would say <laughs> we will use that later on uh, oh don't do the commas um, user comma the id I, let's see if i can do a demo there we go yeah so the next will be two do we have a user two yeah we and then after all we don't so that is how you can iterate over the different uh, identities so you would expect that if you have that uh, dollar o and you iterate through it then you have a linear search and that's absolutely correct and that happens by the way a lot in uh, in databases they the so-called table scans but to avoid that, you could create indexes. Now, MUMPS doesn't have a create index operation like you have on SQL databases. Uh, in MUMPS, you have to program it yourself, and that's a bit tedious. So if we, for example, have, let's uh, show that information, dollar arrow up percent %g, um, this is something interesting. All the um, routines, this is a routine that we're calling, uh, that have a percent proceeding to it 
are what we call globally accessible. So they can be accessed in different UCIs. Remember that I said we have the UCI manager here, but we could also have the UCI VIP, which we had in our company. Uh, those percent G were system utilities. I could also run them in the UCI uh, VIP or VIP. Uh, the other, like this, for example, if this were a routine, it's only accessible in your manager. But percent %g actually shows a global, and we created a global users. So if we have this context, and we would want to make a, uh, say, an index on last name, what you would actually do was uh, users in the IDX last name. I don't know if this is too long, but let's see. Uh, Duches. And you could, for example, give it this ID in a second node. That way you would see, oh, it's this one if you uh, go through it and add to it uh, and then make it empty. And let's see if I, I don't believe that this is allowed. No, exactly. Right? So that was one way. Um, so if we had, for example, a Duchess with the ID of a thousand and one, we would code that. So you could look up for Duchess and only iterate through that list. But you would say this still creates different IOs uh, for the next node, etc. And that is true. So what you often saw was that an index was created like this. One, and let's say the other one is on a thousand and one. Other Mr. Duchess will be my father or my mother. And they would do it like this. Uh, but this has a caveat because this, of course, is limited and usually it's limited to the length of uh, the OS terminal. So you would still have these individual pages like we did before, like so. So this is page one and when that's full, then you do a page two. So you had to uh, track the amount of uh, characters here, which was a bit of a hassle, but it reduces IO considerably. So this is what you saw a lot in uh, indices, although I always used, uh, I don't care, the extra read, <laughs> we're reading through uh, a cache page anyway, so let's just uh, use this. Right, so that is uh, indexes, we're not going to bother with indexes. What we're going to bother with is actually write a routine that will fill uh, users with a lot of different users. And the great thing about MUMS is that you can add it within the system itself. Because MUMS is just like fourth, also sort of an operating system. Uh, so let's make a little uh, demo routine that will create a lot of different users with uh, random names and a random uh, birth here. And then we will create a, a print routine that can actually print uh, the ID. So we give it the ID of one of these users and we'll print its information. And we will uh, create a sequential uh, scanning find routine in MUMS. So you first start with do error up percent ED for edit. And it will ask you the routine name. I will call this a demo. Uh, usually uh, routines are uppercase. Uh, and that is to conform with what MUMS does. You can use lowercase. I like that because then when I do a, a routine a list, I actually see, oh, these are mine. And especially since I'm now in the uh, manager uh, UCI, you would normally not want to actually uh, do that. You want to put them in your own UCI. Right, so we need to start with two spaces, otherwise it doesn't work. And we do first names and we have a bunch of random first names that we will pick a random name out of. <coughs> These are all people that I uh, know. <laughs> you friends, current friends, colleagues. You got to have a Karen, right? Especially when it's an HR system, then you need a Karen. So these are the first names, then do a set of uh, last names. 
There's always a devil in the, in the organization, right? So we have two variables, one with first names, one with last names. Then we say a uh, pension age, HP. Now you would be urged to use an under, uh, underscore. Variables can't take underscores in mums. It's one of those weird, quirky things. And our pension age is currently 67. I expect it to go up. And the age of the working age is 15. So let's parse out the year. This is something that is specific to uh, weird mums. So we use the dollar piece. I just use the dollar P here. And we use the dollar H variable. The dollar H variable holds the, uh, the date and time in, in days since 1841. So I parse out the first uh, digit, which is uh, the number of days. And then I need to divide it by 365.25. That's the amount of days in a year. And add 1841 to it. Whomever thought of this, I don't know. They must have been seriously drunk. And then uh, let's do a read. Number of users to add. And let's call that variable amount. Right, and now we can do a loop to actually loop through the amount of users. For i equals one, let's start at one, increment by one until we hit, hit the amount. And here we have that do, I will do, do, and then that weird dot notation that I said. We're now going to indent it, and that's how mums knows that you're within uh, this scope. So let's get a new ID. So we set the variable ID and we use the identifier uh, function, dollar identifier it's actually, but we shorten everything. And let's say it's for the global users. Anything that starts with a caret and stores data is what we call a global or SQL users would call it a table. So let's uh, pick a first name. Let's do a dollar and I'm bound to make errors here. So we probably get a nice debugging session F names. Let's not do the space. I'm always wanting to do this, but uh, no, I need to. We have a pipeline as a separator, right? And then we do a random dollar R for dollar random. And then we do <coughs> the dollar L, that is actually length. So I want to know the length of uh, these uh, arrays when we split them up. So dollar f uh, dollar L. Oh my God, I'm so I'm so regretting this already. Dollar L first names, and we parse them on this. So we have the length. Of that, we need to subtract one for those because we're going then to add one to the random because the random uh, dollar rent, say uh, 67, will give everything from uh, zero to 66, not 67 included. So hence the plus one. I think I did this right. I have a bracket here. I should have a bracket there. And th yeah, okay. We'll see. The problem is debugging is a hell in, in, in mums. Last name looks good, uh, except this A shouldn't be there. There we go. <coughs> so what we do is we take a piece uh, of one of these uh, variables that we will actually split uh, by the separator here. And we will just take a random one based on uh, well, the length of this array, minus one, and then plus one to get the last. Uh, that's basically what we do. We just take a random name from either of these uh, long strings. Right, now we need to uh, make a birth year. So we call it B year. So that is uh, the year, the current year that we just calculated up here. 
Minus, of course, uh, the pension age plus dollar, and we'll make it a random age of pension minus the age of uh, working age. So that should give a uh, nice birth year. And this actually is a testing system that I uh, pretty much always created for identity management to create a lot of different identities that would adhere to uh, the standard testing set and later we would extend them with little buggy things like for example generate uh, tests where for example uh, there is no leap year and you have a birthday on the 29th of February so those were um, hard-coded tests that we would add in between all this uh, random data right so now we can actually then uh, store it so we store the users set users we have an id now because that's a new id that the system found for us that is available and we have the name and we start with the first name we concatenate concatenate is an underscore hence you cannot use underscores as a set within uh, variables underscore a uh, last name right and then we set the user we have the id and then uh, the age or actually it should be birth year let's do birth year equals uh, b year right and let's do a uh, modulo 1 modulo 10 is equals 0 then we write a dot then we have a bit of a uh, progress it should be right and that is uh, that conditional that I uh, started with with the right so every tenth user the modulo is 0 and then we write a dot to the screen and then we just quit and for good measure we add that so now let's see do arrow up demo uh, let's add uh, first 10 and there is an expression error and you see you, you don't get a line number whomever thought of this actually is a dick it's a dick oh my god so usually what you could do is actually have writes in between and see where it actually breaks i think since we already here this looks good yeah, i'm pretty sure it breaks and there is a debugger but that's not really that friendly either <laughs> so, so usually i do it like this and see which comma is uh, omitted uh, what do we say let's use 10 oh it's immediately already at the first one four e do no, that shouldn't matter if i do a do or oh i see the problem <laughs> there we go now we get a lot of commas and it added a couple and the dot ah not did not to did not do too bad so let's remove those commas and let's run it again do arrow up let's uh, add let's make it 40,000 40 you can see it goes pretty quickly right and then we can use a dollar percent g to actually show our users global and there you go we have all these different names we have all these different birth years so again do error up percent ed and we're going to make a print routine again i use lowercase because i'm actually in the manager uh, uci so i want to know which are my routines so i can delete them later on uh, yeah there was something wrong that i started with so let's clean those out right so uh, let's also pass in a user ID so 
as I said, we want to pass in that user ID, and that is how we pass arguments to routines. So we create a new empty node. New is just reserving memory. It's not really necessary. You can just use a set, but just to show another uh, thing. And again, we will need to calculate the current year. So here we go again. We've done that before. What happened in 1841 that was so interesting? I don't know. And here you see, this is the normal way of writing with capitals. And it gets really dense very quickly, uh, quickly very hard to read. And that's why I don't like mums. So, uh, oh yeah, we did not do this. The single quote is uh, not, it's a not operator. So when data, and data is actually checking to see if there is a node underneath uh, this global. So users, and we put in the user ID. If not, then we can say, uh, write user ID, user ID does not exist because it cannot find it. And that's what data is used for, to actually see if a node is present. Else do, and then let's write a, a nice line of separators. Something like this. Let's write then the user ID is user ID on its own line. And then let's go over the individual nodes because we only remember we have uh, one comma uh, name and one comma H. So we need to go over these individual nodes. So node equals, and we do then the dollar order again, users, and we have the user ID found and then we want to find the next node. And the same thing, quit if node equals empty, because then there is no more information. And the tricky thing is, you get two dots. Oh, what a readable language, right? Ugh. So if node equals uh, name, so uh, remember we have one comma name and that holds the last name surname, so we can then print the first name colon and we do the dollar piece of users we have the id a uh, user id sorry user id comma node we split it by that and that's the first one then we concatenate and uh, space last name and then we continue with the dollar p users user id and then we have the h and that is also tricky you can't really enter new uh, lines so you get often these multi-line thingies so you see a lot of statements being broken up, uh, set that, set that, set that, and then we do that. Uh, that also doesn't really help with readability and speed. Um, so the current year minus, not equals, minus the users, and then we have the user ID comma uh, birth year. This was something that I put the H in, remember, I was thinking. And uh, yeah, uh, since this is a float value, we need to cast it to something that is uh, just an integer, break off the dots at the end, uh, because the, the year actually is, uh, for example, 2024 dot uh, was something we're now 85, almost at the end. So hence we just have to chop that off. Right, and then let's write another separator i'm so sure i fucked this up there must be some really bad errors in here quit 
and for the good practice uh, often you can have several statements and this is the way to note that there are more statements in a file okay well uh, let's see print let's take this one rob meyer of course there is an error and of course there's no line number to make it easy and we're missing an underscore there there we go and i'm pretty confident oh, user id yes so we have an error after user id Let's put these on their own line. Oh, I think I see it. I use node here, but it's not defined yet. We should set node to empty. I think that is the problem. There we go. We got a little bit further. User 10. Where is the rest? Oh yeah, I commented that out for testing purposes so let's see and that is an expression error and that is how we dig through slowly but surely if node equals name yeah then write first oh, I think I put the bracket on the wrong place it should be after the one There we go. Okay. So we have uh, Jeffrey Meyer, age 59. That is user ID 10. Let's uh, check that user ID that's too large, does not find. All right, we got a nice printing routine. <laughs> that takes a lot of effort because the code is so dense. It's, I think everybody agrees that this is really difficult to read. So now let's make a nice find routine, a nice simple uh, linear find routine. We're going to browse through that uh, users list and try to find whatever, uh, in this case, uh, Jeffrey Pipeline Meyer. Not too difficult. Uh, you could do multiple reads, of course, first name, last name, and concatenate it. Not going to bother because now you have that basic knowledge to actually do that yourself. So find, it doesn't take any uh, input because we're going to read it. Uh, name, pipeline last name, that is what we expect, comma, name. And I want a new line as soon as I give enter. Set ID equals zero. That was what we forgot with the note in the last one. That was the debug session set found this is the number of found records i want to have a list of uh, number of found records right um then we do a for loop set id equals and that becomes from the dollar order users id which is empty currently so if id is still empty then we quit and otherwise we do this and we just uh, do an if if users id comma name matches what we uh, entered above then we do write the identity number and we can call our own print number that we just wrote. We just do it like this and we add that user ID in there. And we increment found by one, found equals found plus one, the basic notation. And that should be it. Yeah, that should be it. So then we just write a number of records records found found <laughs> and for good measure let's do this a semicolon is of course a uh, 
remark. So let's do a dollar find. Do find and let's see how many Daisy Dukes we have. <laughs> I love you, Daisy. Ah, it's not a single one. Ah, that's a pity. Uh, Ray Vega. Ah, oh, there's a lot. Oh, my uh, counter isn't working. Come on, syntax error. So we have a little error. See that also uh, debugging is really finicky. You have to have every situation covered. Uh, otherwise you get errors that you will not find. Why did that break? Print works, found equals found plus one should work. Oh, I see the problem and that's why it's still, you need to do the set in front of it. You've probably already seen it. So Ray Vega, uh, let's see if we have a Vincent Vega, the most awesome movie villain, uh, Vincent Vega. Ah, uh, there's 123 of them. New York will be very, very happy. Cool, so that is working. I'm just a bit disappointed I don't have a Daisy Duke. But yeah, in real life I don't have her either, so. I got a Daisy. Oh, am I having an off by one uh, Christmas? I think I may have an off by one here. Let's add. Oh, let's kill this. And then you can also see how you kill something. Kill users. So now if we go to display the global. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Correct. 200,000. I think it might have been an off by one with the uh, random. Now, have I found myself a Daisy Duke? Oh, yes. One that is uh, 65 years old. Uh, that's my that's my age limit. Right, I found my error. I'm a dumbass. You shouldn't do this uh, before sleep, right? Uh, because this is already one based, so I got the length perfectly right. I just needed to add uh, the R plus one because we only get between the zero and the length. So there, kill users. Oh, don't need to edit it. Let's see how long it takes to add half a million and look through them, because that's quite a lot. It isn't the fastest database around. And now let's uh, do a find. My Daisy Duke. Oh my, I got a lot of Daisy Dukes. Look at that. Ooh, one that's 23 years old. Maybe she likes an older daddy who's got some money. At least I got 1,018 to look for. 66, now nah, that's too late. Uh, 64, that's too old. 31, now that is a nice, that's a nice convenient age for Daisy Duke, right? For a guy 51, with a little bit of money in the bank. I think she might, yeah. Uh, just be interested in me. All right, Daisy, give me a call. And one tiny little thing, I don't want the user ID being here, because that's this one, we already got one here. So why would I need to spoil that, right? Daisy Duke. I'm coming, you Georgia Peach. I'm coming. So there you have it. We installed RSM mums. Not the fastest mums, but the most compliant mums. And I showed you the basics of the mums language. Now, it's ironic that I, as an assembly developer, find 
mumps really hard to read and to debug. I think all these little letters, W, I, D, blah, blah, it's even less readable than just your great mnemonics on RISC or on even x86. Yeah, um, and that's why mums as a language is hardly used anymore. However, the database that it created, the NoSQL database, the disorganized data storage, has become more pervasive than it ever was before with NoSQL. And the fastest NoSQL database and the most versatile currently is the one from Cache or Intersystems Cache database. But it costs you, so you just use MongoDB or whatever. The mindset is the same. Yeah, so yeah, that was MUMS, another look into a very esoteric programming language. It seems to become a trend, right? We had Forth, we had RISCA OS, and now MUMS. And that's about as much of esoteric systems I know. I could do perhaps do something on Lisp. Lisp, also a language that I hate with a passion, just like MUMS. But I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.